Hey everyone, it's Nick with NJ Valenti Art, and in today's video, I'm going to cover Affinity's new Mesh Gradient feature. So, let's get started. With a new document open, let's get into the new Mesh Gradient feature. I have to say I'm pretty excited about this one. I tend to use gradients often in my work, and I think this will offer some uh, greater flexibility in doing so. Um, let's grab our rectangle tool here and come over to the rectangle tool. I'll just place a nice rectangle there. And now I'm going to come over to the fill tool. I'm just going to click and drag for a simple gradient. What I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to come up here. Let's just change our colors a little bit. I'm going to change this to our hue saturation uh, color wheel here. Let's pick um, kind of a teal color here. And over here we'll go with almost a purple. So once we've got our gradient set. If we come up here to type, we have linear, which is on now. Um, and then we have these various types, which we've covered in the past. But I want to go ahead and select mesh. And what this will do, it will place the gradient here in the middle. And then as we move this node around, see how that gradient moves and changes and how it becomes a little bit of a sharper edge here. The more we push that gradient. We can use these handles to adjust the gradient as we'd like. We can even pull the outside nodes and handles down. If we select that node, we can push the side of the gradient. You can also add another point for the gradient by simply clicking on the line itself. If you want, Control Z to back that up. But this will give you another node with handles to again continue to push and pull that gradient. All right, so one of the things I'm most excited about the mesh gradient feature is, is actually using it for lighting effects and illustrations. So let's go ahead and we'll come over here and we'll grab our ellipse tool. I'm going to hold shift to make a nice circle. Now this already has the gradient that we have from before. So we'll select our gradient tool, come back over here, switch it to linear. And I'm going to change the colors again just a bit. So we'll select a nice light teal. Over here we'll select a darker teal, so something a little more like that. Blue. Now one thing I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to reverse this gradient. And then I'm going to come over here from linear and change that to mesh. So you can see now we have the um, lighter color here in the center. And I'm going to start moving and manipulating this up here. So I want to create a sphere. So we can keep moving these nodes around. We'll pull up this white highlight here. And then what I could do down here is I can extend the dark area of this gradient further pushing the highlight of the gradient further to the edge. So if this is a, um, you know, if we had our light source coming in here, the light source is hitting here and then traveling down and around the rest of the sphere. So just keep adjusting that just a little bit. And now you've got a sphere. Uh, if you want to ever adjust that mesh again, but just simply select the gradient fill tool here. And you can continue to manipulate that as you'd like in order to get the look you are after. Okay, so I want to show you how we could go ahead and use that mesh gradient um, to create some shadow effects. So I'm going to select this green section of this mask here. And then I'm going to come over to our fill tool and click on that. I'm going to set a basic gradient. So I'm just going to click from top to bottom. I'll come up here to our gradient window. I'm going to click on the darker tone. Click on the color window. I'm going to move this slightly closer to blue. Something kind of like that. Then I'm going to come over here to our fill type. And I want to change it from linear to mesh. Now I'm going to grab our center node here and I'm going to pull it down. I'm also going to take this bottom node. I'm going to push this down a little bit. I can pull these handles out. 
to really spread that. We can move these out just a bit as well. I can grab this top handle and pull that down. I'll bring this down a little bit further. Here we could change the light. Bring some more light down into the cheeks. So I've got a nice shadow area here. We'll get some light on top of the cheeks. Something else I could go ahead and do is I'm going to add another gradient point right here. Pull this node up a bit. I want the light to be able to hit the top of the forehead, get a little bit darker, and then we'll get brighter again once you hit the eyebrows and the upper cheeks, the nose, but then we get a little bit darker here in the mouth. So you could do that with the two different uh, gradients set in there simply by clicking and adding another another node on that line. And we could push the light in a little bit further here with these nodes. So there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of play around with um, when using this. So I think it's a really great feature. I know it's something I'm going to be using quite a bit for my illustration work. Um, and that's just kind of a quick example of how you can use it um, on an actual illustration to create some um, initial shadow shapes. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think about Affinity's new mesh gradient feature in the comments below. You could support the channel directly with the Buy Me A Coffee link in the description and join me on Patreon for vector assets and more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Until next time. <laughs>